Welcome everyone to Almost Cancelled. I am Peter, that is Connor, and we are going to talk about Debris, Season 1, Episode 1. It is simply the pilot. Uh, so we will start spoiler-free since it is a new show. It's a new first episode. Uh, this is a new NBC show. It's a science fiction series, uh, which is created by J.H. Wyman, or Women, they're probably Wyman, uh, which is notable because he is one of the showrunners of Fringe, uh, which is why this perhaps gets a little bit a little bit more attention or creed than it otherwise might have done because our, our attention to network tv these days is a little bit in the limited side it's pretty much the only reason we check this out let's be honest yeah um well that's not entirely true if i had actually known it existed <laughs> then sure. i may have chucked, checked it out anyway but I, it was introduced to me as one of the showrunners of fringe has the show starting like next week i'm like oh yeah, this this almost completely slipped us by. Yes, uh, so I mean the premise alone, uh, at least was in the wheelhouse enough that I might have checked it out. But uh, this is a show about well, I mean obviously the, the title kind of gives part of it away, but specifically it's alien debris. It's just a uh, alien ship, and a few years ago exploded or something to that effect uh, at a certain distance from the planet, and. Over the past couple of years, there's been little bits of debris starting to fall, and it has weird properties and weird science fiction anomalies have started to happen around this debris, which has unique properties, weird gravitational magnetism, and other such stuff. Uh, honestly, it's funny, because obviously we mentioned Fringe, and I think by extension you have to kind of also bring up X-Files a little bit. It does kind of feel like it wants to be the new version of that. Not that it's the exact same things they're doing, but in the sense that we have two main characters who are agents, who are investigating weird stuff that's happening. And there's an ongoing thing going on as well, obviously, with everything. There's conspiracies, there's secrets, there's mysteries. Uh, and as a pilot that does have, I'd say, not just the one hook at the end, which we see a pilot always should have, has two hooks at the end. Uh, it's going above and beyond, hmm. in a way. So I'm trying to think what the second one is off the top of my head, but I'm sure we'll get to it. Yes, they're, they're back to back, so I'm sure, I'm sure uh, your mind will re refresh when we get there. It, it uh, probably will. But we'll start spoiler free. Uh, so yeah, we have two agents. We have one who is from the CIA, who is our who is our guy, our male lead character. Uh, he is Brian, and we have uh, Finola, who is our female lead character, and she works for MI6. It is a coalition, uh, and they've got their own private plane that they're flying around. In because obviously these things are happening all over the world because it's the breed just landing. Yeah whatever the, the Earth may happen to be spinning towards. Well, it's always spinning in one place, but you know what I mean. Um, so, Cara, what did you think of the pilot for Debris? I did not think it was that good. Um, I There were multiple points where I questioned if I was actually watching a pilot because it felt like there was so much going on and that it, it didn't feel like it was introducing things very well. It felt like it was building on things I should know that I don't feel like it's set up very well near the start of the episode. Uh, so I think it failed on a lot of its basic elements of what a pilot should succeed at, for me. Uh, I think I disagree with most of that. Um, this, to me, was a fairly good pilot. Not perfect, um, as very few network pilots are. Hmm. It has some of the rushed elements that I kind of expect from a lot of these. Uh, I thought it did a decent enough job of giving me two lead characters that, while not fully fleshed out yet, don't feel... I guess this is just more of a casting compliment than anything else. It felt like yeah, they had two decent actors who were doing the best with the material and not just generic TV faces that I... You know, I, I feel like I got, I got enough of both of these these actors here that I, I kind of get a sense of who they are and how it can progress. Um, mm. I actually think uh, there was just enough explained to latch on to what this first episode was doing but a, a lot of a lot of what's going on with the the alien technology itself is obviously still very up in the air and very mysterious I, I get where you come from i think for me there was like points where it felt like things should have weight to them because it's a progression uh and i get that it's a progression from context but because we were just dropped in at this point it doesn't feel like it's building on anything to me. It just feels like this is the starting point, and that's not where these characters are. So I felt like, I felt this weird disconnect. It is a starting point. I don't. I, I, I genuinely don't know what the complaint is. <laughs> no, I'll get into more in spoilers okay, when, yeah, when we're yeah, discussing yeah. things more specifically. Yeah, I, I didn't feel that at all. <laughs> it felt at like the start of a show to me. Uh, 
um <laughs> i didn't feel anything like i was like it was pretending to be later on it did have some pilot problems but the pilot problems feel typical of pilots uh particularly pilots of shows that i have liked ultimately that where the way I, I saw a lot of potential in this um Admittedly, it's not actually unique potential because it is kind of playing on a lot of things that have been done before, and it's playing mm. on, uh, you know, a, a, a creator, a showrunner who's significantly attached to one of those previous examples. Um, but that that in a way buys it a little bit of trust, perhaps that other shows might not have. Um, but as far as network pilots go, I actually thought this was was perfectly solid. It did have a little bit of that that pilot or not pilot. I mean, I've said that already, but I mean more a little bit of that networky kind of vibe to certain sure. things that it does uh you know some of the guest stars feel a bit networky and, and, and things like that uh, it does very much have a, a a plot of this episode that it wraps up by the end uh that feels like a network show for better and worse and i, I say that uh, genuinely in the sense that we don't really have enough shows that have sort of like a, a of the week story that network tv when it's good at doing it is very good at doing it and other platforms don't really offer that usually uh, so it was kind of refreshing to have a plot that I knew was going to be wrapped up by the end of the episode. Obviously, it feeds into the larger thing that's building sure, and so yeah. on. But it, it's very much here's what's going on. There's, there's obviously several threads that it's left open for for, for things. Uh, so it feels... I, I think my biggest concern about this show, honestly, is that it's going to be very good by the end of season one and then get cancelled immediately because good shows aren't allowed to survive on network TV anymore. Uh I, 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 I'm i actually more concerned about it getting better and being cancelled than I am of it not improving. That, that is genuinely how I feel about this pilot at the end of it's it. It's honestly quite surprising to me. Um, I can't remember the last time we were this far apart on a on a pilot. Um, honestly, I think you've grown... Uh, you've not grown cynical or JD because you're already cynical and JD. Um, <laughs> I was just thinking that. Um... I feel I feel like <laughs> I feel like you've lost the ability to see the potential at a show like this. I I, I watch. I, I was even thinking about it as I was watching this panel. McCorra's going to hate this, and he's not going to see any of the potential in it. And he's not going to continue it because Cora hates look, continuing things. So <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to say it's awful. It's not the worst thing I've ever watched by a long shot. <laughs> there is just and and maybe I have lost some of the you know, ability to see potential. Maybe I, I don't know, maybe that's true. But I have specific problems to this episode that I feel are not pilot problems that I usually have. You know, there, there are a lot of pilot problems that I can almost overlook as being uh, just pilot stuff, right? Um, but there are stuff in this where I feel disconnected on a way that, that I just sh feel like I really shouldn't. Um, and, I, you know, I'm surprised at how much you uh, enjoyed this comparatively, uh, honestly. Yeah, I don't... I, I I think it has several several problems, but they're all kind of problems that feel akin to what a network pilot normally has. Uh, essentially, what I'm looking for when it comes to a network pilot, especially a genre network pilot like this, which is the start of a X-Files slash Fringe slash Buffy slash pick your successful tv show of the past um because none of them have particularly great first episodes uh no. they, they they all have generic qualities in their first episodes and this does have some generic qualities it does have the two agents try to solve a mystery um although the mystery is admittedly a, a lot weirder than a lot of things i mean we just recently did the pilot for clarice and that's just your typical murder mystery kind of kind of thing as a killer blah 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 uh, it would be really weird in that if, if shit got <laughs> like you know alien though yeah, but the actual alien stuff in this I thought was intriguing premise-wise, because uh, it doesn't just kind of feel like we're, we're I mean we're clearly building upon what this alien material and technology does and how it affects things. And it's adding to, you know by the end of the episode it's added a whole extra element as to what it can possibly do, but it doesn't necessarily feel like it's just going to be able to randomly do a million different things that are going to serve as the basis for you know. It's, it's, you know, it's not like magic in the sense where it can literally be anything. It feels like, okay, by the end of this episode, it's established, okay, it's, it's got this. So we start off with weird magnetic and gravitational stuff. And then mm. by the end, it's like, okay, so it's connecting in a bit of a deeper level to, to living beings by the end in this way. And it's like, oh, okay, okay. Um, it, it feels like 
there is some sort of set plan involved because it just feels too specific to begin with. Um, but it is very specific, yeah. Yeah, as opposed to just oh, and this is me making fun of Fringe, and I love Fringe. Fringe, I think, is an excellent show, uh, and has one of the best endings in TV history. But you know, at the start of Fringe, it was basically oh, my dad was involved in a bunch of experiments, and literally anything you can think of might be a premise of an episode coming up. Uh, uh, whereas at least with this, I get the sense from this episode that even if things feel kind of random at first, they're all going to fit into a a theme or would, something that ties them all. I would hope they do. Um, it feels like it should. I, I mean, you know, may, maybe it will, maybe it won't, but it definitely should. Yes. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I agree with what you're saying, though, I think. Yeah. No, I, I get that sense from it. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's a, that's a couple of creepy scenes. Uh, I thought the music was mostly kind of good. Not that stand out amazing, but good. I, I, I found it quite irritating at multiple points. Of course you did. I, no, I, I genuinely mm. did. There was like two or three times where it uh, completely took me out of the scene because it was just doing something strange and not in a good way. Not not in a all oh, this is strange because strange things are happening on screen sort of way more just it felt at odds with the scene to me uh, i found myself enjoying the music uh mostly throughout the episode um the shows have very rarely got themselves together for episode one which is why we often talk about piloted problems but it felt like mm. there's a clear goal in mind of what this wants to feel like and uh be like once it actually hits you know gets its foot under its feet and i could feel that throughout the pilot uh, this is again going back to just sort of feeling potential in things and and seeing the pieces that they want to make all fit together and clearly, I don't think they're all fitting together yet. Like, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and say that. There's definitely, you know, sometimes when it faded to black with the, the shot cliffhanger for the ad break, where I'm like, yeah, it's network TV. Or uh, when it has to maybe shoehorn a little bit too much into its pilot because they want to set up enough threads uh, to really get us hooked on. This, so so maybe, maybe, maybe me even compliment for having two hooks at the end. You know, maybe one of them didn't need to be at the end of episode one. You, you could have saved that uh, for a little bit down the line. Uh, there's a there's no of maybe that comes from the network being you know overly safe perhaps of like you know we need to make sure people come back but i'll, I'll just say before we start the spoilers that uh, i do think it's worth checking out if you like this type of tv if you like the idea of another kind of fringy style show uh with what seems like decent enough pair of characters i mean again they're not fully fleshed out yet but uh they, they come across better to me than i don't know any other characters from a network pilot that i've seen in the last few years so uh not high bar. Uh, just but... uh, genuine interest, because I found them fairly bland. Could you put across anything of what made them come across as you know more interesting or likable than any others, or was it just you think you know acting and chemistry? I, I think acting for the most part. I mean, they do a simple thing early on where we hear them both talking to their superiors on the phone, and we get that they both have uh, different orders where they're supposed to be completely open with each other, but. Uh, the CIA, you know, handlers like, hey, right now, we are technically working with them, but there's some stuff here you're not going to tell them. We're going to keep some stuff secret. And They're she... both working under the assumption yeah. that the other is keeping secrets. So yes. inherently, they end up keeping secrets. Yes. So so they're, they're both kind of been told to play against each other. And I imagine that's something that obviously break down as they learn to trust each other and form a bond over time. And then eventually uh, sort of work almost independently from the, the, the you know, the, the institutions they're from. Um, but... I mean, I think that's a simple thing from, you know, just episode one to create some a typical dynamic. Um, from there, I thought he, the guy, uh, Brian, he has a, like a point where just randomly in the middle of a scene where the, someone's talking about an emotional tragedy, he actually just, like, leaves the scene. He can't handle it and just leaves. And I actually thought it was kind of an interesting, because he's so tough and kind of, like, stoic throughout most of the episode that his kind of sudden because he's very quiet throughout the scene and then he just has to get up and leave, that I thought it was, oh, that's an interesting little quirk. It's, it's, or, I mean, quirk's maybe not the right word, but it's an interesting little moment of, oh, well, clearly there's something in his backstory, something's hitting a personal card here. Uh, and because he's been played such a specific way uh, by an actor who I have seen before uh, in something, and I couldn't tell you what it was, uh, but Jonathan Tucker's definitely been in something else. Um, but there's, just, uh, there's, there's that, and, uh, and then uh, Fanola's got, you know, Backstory with her, her dad was one of the scientists, uh, or astronomers, I should say, uh, who were... That's still a scientist. Still a scientist, but I mean specifically more uh, an astronomer who 
spotted the, the ship in the sky and uh was one of the first to you know talk about it and whatever um it sets enough up with the pair of them that i felt like i got a pilot of two characters that there's a foundation to build upon whereas most network pilots i'll get blandy mcblanderson and blandy mcblanderson who will have absolutely nothing outside of maybe oh maybe they'll have a romance later maybe there's a, a romance brewing and i felt like outside of one joke at the start where he he kind of jokes on the phone to his superior ah oh, she's falling in love with me but keeping it professional and he's just joking but that is it. There's nothing else in this episode that's about them possibly, and they, maybe they will. Maybe if this last this is network TV after yeah, all, right? <laughs> yeah, they'll probably madly in love in two seasons' time. Whatever. But there's nothing in this episode that actually plays into that. Uh, no, I'll, I'll definitely give you that point. Um, let's say this is network TV, so they'll definitely play with it at some point. Uh, but they're not like pushing that from the start. Yes. Uh, honestly, if I have a just a final spoiler-free critique of the episode, uh, this just kind of comes back to the maybe but a little overstuffed. Is the elements that we open the episode with actually is mostly not super relevant to the rest of the episode? It kind of comes back a little bit later, which does introduce a cool little thing that I that I like. Mm. But uh, it mostly felt kind of like when I look back at the episode when I got to the end, I'm like, ah, oh, you kind of just saved these, these, you know, this 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 like black market deal thing. Uh, but I guess they just, they just wanted a, a sexy action sequence to open the show. Yeah, essentially they wanted a cool scene to open the show with, and it does have a cool moment in it where when you see what the, the debris does to someone, uh, mm. and it's neat. So I get why it's there, uh, but it does make it like it feels like it's jumping back and forth a little bit from different things because of that. But uh, that's it. I, I think it's a decent pilot. I think it's a decent pilot with a, a show with potential. So anyway, spoilers, spoilers for what's going on here then. Uh, so the big things to take away from this episode one. So the main plot is about uh, a mysterious child who at first we think he's with his mother and the mother just starts like bleeding from her eyes and then appears to be dead. It's actually kind of a dark scene. This is this is one of these moments where I'm like, oh, I kind of like this scene. I like just how kind of quietly she dies in the car. She, just, she stops the car. She's got enough control to stop the car. And, you th- and again, at this point, you just think it's a mother and son. But then the son gets out of the door, you know, out of the car and sort of like pulls her out of the car and she's like floating just you know and it's, it feels mag- like a mag- magnetism thing because it's just mm-hmm. so high off the ground and she's just floating um and then when they all hear of this anomaly and they come and find her and she's like caught in like a barbed wire fence uh they unhook her and she just keeps floating to like wherever her destination is and there's some other bodies there uh, and it turns out that this little kid is actually abducting p- different people like when, when he encounters someone usually a woman, although not always, uh, basically makes them think that they're his mother and then does the same thing to them. Uh, and later in the episode, we find out that this kid is the manifestation of a grieving mother who lost her child in a car accident, like, you know, six, seven months prior. And when she encountered this piece of debris, it's a fairly big part, because, you know, the, other part, the part we see at the start of the episode is like this little, you know, it's a little shot, thinky yeah. thing. This is like more of a, like a, like half of an engine or something sitting in the in the the forest, uh, and this is really a, like this, this, the human connection stuff comes in where uh, our main character Fanola, when she goes near it, she gets like visions of her mother, dead mother, in her head, and that's what kind of prompts the idea that this mother who was grieving and her feelings were so strong that it manifested this version of her son, who is basically feeding off life force of different people to stay alive. Uh, just kind of reliving the final moments yeah. in a lot of ways. Yeah, because he always takes them to the same road where, where the crash happened and always has them, the, the you know, quote-unquote mother... The, the same conversation. Yeah, yeah, talking about the circus and what you see tight rope walkers. So, you got you got all this going. Um, and, it, and I do appreciate, well, it, 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 obviously there's only so much it can resonate because, you know, it's a, it's a plot and a pilot. Uh, so there's only so much we're going to feel about the the teenage daughter of this mother talking to her, because she's, she's technically not dead. All these people aren't technically dead. They're actually more of a weird coma. Yes, they have no pulses or whatever else they checked. A few, a few of the major you know, signs of life. Yeah. And it was like, no, nothing. And they think they're dead until they open their eyes and they're not. Yeah. Uh, so there's a happier ending where they all get to come back at the end when the thing's solved, but... It doesn't come down to, like, a gunfight. It doesn't come down to anything like that. It comes down to this daughter, like, pleading with her mother to let her son go. And that, that, that you know, that that bond with the, the alien artifact being broken is what releases everything. 
Uh, and that's we have the ticking time bomb here as well, where Fanola has been is the next victim. She's taken by the kid, uh, yeah. which isn't a coincidence either. It's something that like she's taken because they're investigating the previous person they took. They're, they're they're intervening in the next victim when she herself is then taken as the as the new mother. Uh, I thought all this worked well enough. Uh, like I say, like the over dramatization of the daughter like crying her eyes out as she tries to like bring her mother you know back from the brink. Like, yeah, obviously it's overdramatic and it's it, it, there's only so much of it we're going to feel in a pilot. Uh, but I do appreciate that the solution to this problem was not uh, an action scene. It wasn't like a, a gunfight. Uh, it showed us that Brian isn't an idiot. Like, he realized that going to like track track his partner down wasn't going to help anything because the woman that they, they got to at the gas station first still collapsed into this weird floating coma. As so it's almost else. On, a, on, on a timer, essentially, at that point. Yeah. So he realized that what he had to do was go back to the source uh, and actually face the emotion at the core, which is nice in a thematic way because his whole character, what we get of him in this episode, is that he can't handle the emotions when the daughter's talking earlier and he leaves the scene. So him having to accept that to win this... And it's not his own emotions he's having to face up to, but it's kind of like a prelude to ultimately some point in the season when he will. Uh, is that sure. he has to accept that he does have to face his emotions, and that's he, he kind of does it in a sort of you know uh, parallel through a way, proxy. yeah, through a proxy here, yeah. Uh, yeah. So that works fine. Uh, some neat, like I say, the, the weirdness of the the mother's the first mother's death and the floating I thought was a cool visual, uh, especially when they were sort of following when, because when they were with the forensics and they're like, wait a minute, the wind's not blowing this way that she's blowing because because at first they think it's just oh the wind's been blowing her this way. And they and he just unhooks her because her That's sleeve such, is such a a strange observation though with how quickly wind can change. It's like where she's not moving at this point, right? Yes. Because she's hooked. So like, oh, the wind's not blowing in this direction. It's like, well, like could have been before she was hooked. <laughs> yeah, but I suppose the assumption would be is that her body would be like angled differently. Oh, just, would it swivel again? Yeah, because okay. it'd still be connected to the bit of the fence, but she'd be sort of going that way. Sure. Okay. So, it took a moment for someone to realize, wait, all the grass is all blowing that way. Why, why is she still aiming that sure. way? Sure, okay, I'm with you. Uh, and yeah, I like the visual of them like, just watching the slow body floating. It's like, okay, where's it going? Like, it's got a destination. Where, where, where? A body tornado. Uh, yeah, so it's like all the victims of this thing are just in a, a body tornado. Yeah, it's weird. Uh, I like the weirdness, though. I mean, I'm into the weirdness. Uh, the, the, the start of the episode is the black market, because obviously there's a black market selling parts of this tech even though it's clearly very dangerous because the the maid who touches it basically they're in a hotel and she's they're on like the 14th floor i think they said and she basically falls to the floor and she, it's like she teleports to the the ground floor and just like falls into a table and dies but it is like she had the fall it's, it's as if she fell 14 stories without touching anything right and we do see people take like teleporting pills later yeah, the, the the two people who bought the thing at the end show, or they show up at the artifact in the woods, and they realize that these two must be working for some third party who's after tech, because this is an organ. This can't just be them, because they've gotten to this too quickly. They must be part of an organization of some kind. I, I assume it's some sort of villainous group that's related Naturally. to the, the, the tech. So we have the CIA, we have the MI6, and we've got the villainous group. That makes sense. It's uh, definitely also the CIA. Okay. <laughs> I don't think so based on the ending stuff. <laughs> but you admit it's a possibility. Because, well, because one of the hooks at the end is that the believedly dead father of Fanola is actually seems to be in charge of these two guys at the end. So it seems like he's running whatever this third group uh, yeah. is. For now. Until they, until they reveal later who, you know, who he's working for all along. And Fanola is British, so if anything, it would more likely be the MI6. All right, it might be MI6 then. Take your pick of whichever organization. <laughs> Look, stop looking for things to be cynical about, that, all right? That wasn't, you know what? <laughs> that wasn't even something that occurred to you while I was watching it. It was just popped into my head then and I threw it out there. What I liked about this teleporting pill thing, though, is that when they teleport away with their pills, which is a, was a cool effect, I thought, the way they kind of, it was like their visual kind of imploded. At first, I thought they were, because you know, when we first see them take it, it looked like they were just turning invisible. Mm-hmm because of the way it kind of folded in on them. It wasn't until they you know, reappeared somewhere else that I realized it was teleportation, because it didn't look like a traditional teleportation no. effect. Uh, but then, of course, they arrive somewhere else. But notably, this is the great part, is that one of them arrives in the middle of like a pillar of a bridge. So he's actually begging for death, essentially. 
uh, and the the main guy you know picks up his gun and shoots him. And I actually I almost regret that they decided to show what it looked like him sticking out the the pillar when the the authorities arrive because I thought you know what the sound of him begging for death m- like my imagination of what it looked like him like being half in a wall was just so much more na- gnarly and <laughs> yeah <laughs> nasty. it was always going to be on network TV though yeah. wasn't it and and maybe that's something that they should have showed some restraint on i guess like yeah. i think what i would have liked is just like almost like a just a little bit of him out of focus like almost as if I it's over the shoulder like you could have got away with showing it more at first because it was at night yes so it was all dark and you could have hidden a lot of it and you could have shown it a bit ironically a bit clearer without ruining the effect whereas you know by the time you show up and you're you're investigating it up close you you lose that a bit yeah so, I, but I, I did like the tech. I like the idea that it's not so much that, I mean, maybe this alien tech does just do this, but I like the idea that humans are starting to tinker with it, and this is maybe one of the results of, of this tech being studied sure. and, and played with and whatever else. Uh, so, so that's neat. Uh, the other big hook at the end, uh, because it is worth mentioning that uh, Brian finds out about the father. Like, he knows her father's alive and he's told not to tell her. So, that's a big, a big character thing for you know them to have a big bit of drama with later she'll find out you know find out that he knows and it'll be a whole big thing yeah or maybe that that's the thing that he decides to eventually trust her with when you know the chips are down he he tells her and yeah i mean i guarantee still within that episode there'll be her being annoyed that he didn't tell her sooner and you'll have that but that's a lot more forgivable than doing it the other way yeah um the other big thing at the end is that the cia seem to be trying to rebuild this ship out of whatever parts they find uh, we see them kind of they've mapped out where it should go and they've got a couple of chunks there's not all, i mean it's a lot of it's not there but this is one of these things where oh if this show lasts five seasons i could see them like you know end of season four is when they finally get the last part and then season five is like okay what happens now we have to fill ship <laughs> like what happened mm. what happens now uh but so that was the two hooks at the end it was the dad's alive and seems to be running this this third party evil i mean we assume evil we don't actually know for sure maybe it's good maybe he's trying to stop the cia getting all the pieces yeah. together and, and ruining everything notably the guy who was selling the the part at the start he died he actually died very quickly uh during the opening scene he went out the window but that was the actor who was the villain in season one of winona erp i believe uh i'm pretty sure that was i him. mean i don't i cannot remember that well enough uh, yeah he, he he wasn't memorable enough for me well, from... in, in either show admittedly um uh, all right. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, let, no, again, I don't want to say that, that he, he was bad or there was anything wrong with him. Just not memorable enough for a show from, I don't know, four years ago, whenever that was, three years ago. It was him, I have confirmed. Okay, fair enough. Yes. Well, well done you for, for noticing and remembering. He was Bobo Del Rey. He also oh, played, course, he also played Rasputin in Legends of Tomorrow. That was in 2020, though, so we've not seen that episode. <laughs> oh, okay, that's fine. I was going to say, I don't remember that. He showed up in something, though, that we also... Oh, All Our Carbon. He was in season one of All Our Carbon. <laughs> oh, yeah, I definitely remember everything about All Our Carbon. <laughs> Look, the point is, is, you've seen his face a couple of times, though, so he, he should uh, uh, be prodding your brain a little bit. All right, I'll allow it. Maybe he should have been. All right. Uh, so, there was no great point to make there. Just that, oh, hey, I recognized that face. That was fair. Did you did you figure out where you know the main guy from yet? Oh, I didn't click on him yet. I I, I mean. Oh okay. Oh hi, let me click on him. Let's let's see if uh, just see if up. there is anything that that sticks out. Because uh, oh well, he was in the runes, which I did in streams like a year and a half ago. He was in the Virgin Suicides, which I've seen. He was in Westworld, <laughs> of all things. Was he? Yeah, Major Craddock. Yeah, I mean, I reckon, I reckon he's one of the like the the guards in the park. I'm sure. Uh, okay. I knew his face. I could believe that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, he's, he's one of these guys that's been around, but yeah, those are those are the main things. Fair enough. I meant to, I never realized I've seen him in multiple things, so clearly... This he, is... he, to be fair, though, by the time you're leading a network show, you've probably popped up in a handful of places. Yeah, yeah, most likely. So it's it's not uncommon that you would have at least some vague recognition. Oh, maybe he's not a guard, because he's in a few 2018 episodes, which is season two. And mm-hmm. then he's in a few 2020 episodes, which is season three. So maybe he's not a guard. At... Hmm. Huh. Do you know what? 
I can picture his face in it. I'm just, but clearly I've forgotten. You exactly. can't picture the context yeah. of everything around him. Yeah. Oh well. Uh, no matter. Not that important. No matter. Uh, but yeah, uh, Debris, I think, is a fine pilot. If, if I honestly, my biggest complaint is that the name's a bit. Like, I get why it's called Debris, <laughs> but A, it doesn't sound that exciting, and B, by the time most of the Debris, like, got, the name might become a little dated in terms of the context of the show. <laughs> That's fair. I think, um, I just to get into, you know, what I didn't really enjoy as, as, as a key factor, because uh, I, I did think it was in the spoiler territory, I thought I'll keep it safe, is um, mm-hmm. the escalation of what the Debris does felt like a lot. For this episode especially given the context felt to me um that the characters this was very new to them right um like the start of this episode when the piece of debris is just floating there that's pretty much the extent of what the i mean i, I get the idea that the debris has done different things because um i can't remember who it is but one of them makes a comment saying oh this is like that one that we found in manchester it's very similar mm-hmm but I got no impression that it had that they'd had a lot of indication that it interacts with human bodies, uh, in, in quite the extent it has here. Like yeah, where it's just making bodies float. That felt relatively new. I think it. Uh, I think they react that way. Yeah, sure. Yeah, that right. So that's how it felt to me. So that felt like okay, that's the major leap forward, and I could, I was kind of on board with that. But by the time it got to, oh no, there's a deeper connection as well. That it was oh no, it actually it, it's interacting with people uh, on a on an emotional level, as well as just this physical level, it felt like, okay, this is a lot to go in in one episode from debris floats, people floats, emotional connection. It felt like there was a lot being packed into this 40-minute pilot. Like, just... Especially as, like I say, you know, the people floating was new as well to our characters. So this felt like quite a leap up to me, at least. That it kind of... It lost me as it went... As it became clear that this... That this, uh, this boy was this manifestation and you know there was something even weirder going on that's the point where it lost me where it felt like okay you just it's too much in one episode uh, you know you've got to you, you've got to build up to it for me a little bit more um there's a, a, a dan slot the the writer of, of comics has a thing on twitter where you know, you, you've got to stick with you know you can only have one form of you know your weird thing in a in a movie or you know in, you know, in this case tv show at first you've got to build to anything beyond that and, I, and I, I, you know, there are very few exceptions to this. And this here, it starts with the weird thing already, with the the debris itself. That's already a weird concept to us, and that has its own properties. And we see that in the opening sequence of how that affects people. Just you know, how it affects them. You know, uh, you know, the, like the maid, like you said. So I'm already kind of at that level of g- getting around that. And then we see this whole other level of well, there's clearly been some interaction with with a woman here, why she's floating, uh, or you know, with the the boy who's making her do that either way it felt like okay you're already throwing a lot in on top there but then going above that again it just felt so much that i uh i kind of checked out because of it because it kind of it overdid it in one episode for me um it is just, that, that's why i came back to saying it's really overstuffed for me on a conceptual level it's overstuffed pilot i don't necessarily disagree with that but i also have a problem with it getting weirder because to me the Okay, the regular properties of the debris, which is the magnetic stuff, uh, is normal. You know, they're, they're six months or whatever into the debris falling or something like that, they said at the start. Uh, there, was, there was some text at the I, start. I think it was six or three months. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and the whole point of the pilot is that we're going to get to stuff that the characters themselves have not encountered yet. This is the, the first big sign of really weird stuff that they're going to be like, whoa, this is completely different. Uh, yeah. So on that front, it worked with decent enough for me I'm not, I'm, I, it's not that much of an argument I just I didn't disconnect from it like you said you did I, I, I didn't lose me because of that uh, yeah it just became too much in one thing let's like say you know uh, where it's affecting the, the you know the, the women's bodies and they're floating and that is new to our characters and so it's you know it's extra new to us because we're still digesting everything but I, I could still I was still on board at that point uh, it was only when it went the step further with the emotional connection that I feel like it it lost me because it was like okay now it's it's too much in one episode. Yeah, but what would you have uh, done? Especially that? as a new ship. What would you have done though? Like if you got this mystery of the the, the bodies floating, you have to do something with that by the end. There has to be a resolution to that. That that does. Um, and I mean, well, I'm I'm not right. This isn't my job to write their show, but I think <laughs> um something more directly with the debris rather than this manifestation and this emotional connection uh for me would have 
would have been better and would have kept me more engaged if it was something more directly as a physical property, at least f at first. This doesn't necessarily uh, dispute the claim that it's overstuffed because it kind of is, uh, uh, but yeah, I would say that perhaps the reason why they went with this specific story for their pilot is because thematically the idea of the debris connecting with our emotions is going to be very important to what the overall themes of the show. So they felt it was important to have that be a part of the pilot, to be have that be part of episode one. Because maybe it's, we're going to come back to that over and over again. We're going to come back to the idea that this does affect and interact with how we view each other, how we feel about each other. So I, I kind of get the reasons why it might I, I, be there. And I, I get where you come from. They're trying to make a statement. And I think, uh, you, and I, and I think you, can, you can sit and, you know, critique why it's, it is overstuffed in the pilot. But like I say, so many of these pilots feel this way. And I think, for the most part, when you look back much later, you don't really care, uh, necessarily. If the show grows into something, it doesn't really matter that the pilot was a bit overstuffed. Because there's definitely things in the fringe pilot that I think are a bit overstuffed. There's definitely things... Uh, I mean, Chuck's a little bit different, because Chuck... I wouldn't say it was overstuffed. Chuck just wasn't as good <laughs> until later. But, it was just a bit rough around the edges, yeah. Uh, but, yeah. Anyway, that's Debris. Uh, so you can of course let us know what you thought of the first episode in the comments you can like and subscribe those things are very important on youtube and help the uh the youtube algorithm uh help us find more people so please do uh, you can of course also support us over at patreon.com slash tv for as little as one dollar per month and help keep all the content coming and you can catch us on twitter at mailed underscore fuzz for channel updates but that is us so thank you once again for watching or listening we always appreciate it keep watching tv have you got any vanilla?